Okay, hello everyone, and welcome to our uh, uh, Ivy Alumni Talk series today. And uh, we will start in about one minute. Okay, so good to see you guys again. And if you are new to this uh, talk series, um, the talk series uh, will just be uh, an event that we uh, invite some students from the top colleges, and they are going to share their application and also their experience uh, in the colleges. Okay, yeah, so if you uh, like this event uh, from the, the past events, or you know someone who wants to uh, major in computer science or want to go to Carnegie Mellon University, you can also share this uh, event to them by just sending the like the Zoom link to the others. So they can also uh, learn from our um, guest speaker today. And uh, yes, and you can also have the interaction uh, with us and also just to ask any questions you are interested in. Okay, yeah, so um, I think it's about the time. So I think we can first get started by introducing our guest speaker for today. So yeah, today we are uh, excited to invite um, Yifan from the Carnegie Mellon University. And he is a current senior study in uh, computer science. So I think we can first let Yifan uh, to introduce some uh, about himself and also see, uh, yeah, so what he has to say about himself. Yeah, sure. Thank you. And also great shout out for Dennis to invite me to this uh, great event and having me the opportunity to introduce this great university to all of you guys. My name is Ifan and I'm currently a senior in uh, computer science and specifically I'm doing data science right now. And uh, I'm also the president of uh, CMU Chinese Student Association. So if you feel free to reach out for me for any other related issues, including like uh, housing or other issues, yeah. And uh, can we go to the next slide? Yeah, of course, yeah. So uh, yeah, yeah, so Ivan is also the uh, the CSSA president uh, at Carnegie Mellon University. So if you are attending CMU, uh, maybe next year, you can also reach out to him uh, for any, uh, yeah, so they, he is going to help you on all the other stuff um, when you get to CMU. Okay, yeah, so I think uh, maybe the first question for today's uh, event is just um, what do you like about CMU? So especially after you got into CMU, uh, what is the biggest part that you like about CMU? Yeah, sure. So uh, I have a detailed outline on the first, yeah, on the first page, yeah. So CMU is not a, such a nerdy school as you guys might imagine. So we have still a lot of fun events going on throughout the entire of the year. So the first page, uh, the first picture on the top left corner is our spring carnival. It's uh, basically a holiday that lasts for uh, five or four days, depending on like which weekend it is in. And during the event we have, you can see we have those uh, inflated like castles and also like other uh, like playing devices on our uh, on our lawn, and we also like the school also bring in different kinds of animals like uh, sheep and uh, alpaca, and also mm -hmm. like of course dog therapy and also cats for you to pet. So because this is happening like on the uh, like late spring, it's pretty good weather, and you can still like hang out with your friends, not going to school, but going to like botanic gardens and also going barbecue like in some uh, national parks that is definitely okay so this is a five-day break and during the uh, spring carnival we also have a traditional event going on uh, on the top right corner and it's called the buggy race the buggy race is uh, it's like a competition happening if you know about Pittsburgh's geography. It is uh, located on the mountains, which means it has a lot of inclines on its roads. So it is a perfect condition for you to have like a running race. And you see like those cards, cards like stuff in there, <laughs> like they're pushing in their hands. It's, it's called the buggy. And there's actually someone uh, laying in there to control like the direction of like where they're going throughout the race. And also this is a, uh, like a historical event that has been lasted for like uh, 60 or 50 years. So the local 
television and also like the radio will also be live streaming this entire event. It is pretty exciting if you can step on the road and then just to watch this game. And on the bottom left corner, this is like a like a panorama view of our entire campus from the uh, like the main lawn. It is called the cut, and 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 there the, there is a fence. Like this is a place where you can uh, maximize your creativity and just draw everything on it. So there are some, like uh, for example, uh, club promotion and also like event promotion and also uh, those uh, events happening around the world that you will see on this fence. And it also has the Guinness record of the fence that being painted for the most time. And we also have a weird tradition that the school bans uh, from using like other painting devices on this fence, but you have to like brush it by hand to uh, for, for our tradition, yeah. And also on the bottom right page, this is a, a shot from the Batman, like uh, Dark Knight, I think. And this is actually happening in our, one of our, uh, it's called Mellon Institute of Science. It's just like a classroom building, but it's, it is uh, being uh, constructed in a very uh, fascinating way. And I really admire the aesthetics. So CMU actually is quite proud about like Batman taking place in this, in front of this building. So they kept like all the fire burns from the, uh, from the movie shots and they still lasted to today. So if you come and see, you will actually see all, all of those tra traits on it. Yeah, yeah. and also mm -hmm. on next page, I have an outline for you guys about the pros and cons that I think major happening about studying at CMU. So first of all, it is of the best academic strengths if you're pursuing any related major in robotics and programming, also in uh, business analytics and probably uh, business administration. We have already uh, peaked for a top one in all of those majors. And also uh, you have great academic flex flexibility, which means even if you are not in the uh, computer science major, you're free to take any of these courses uh, at, like, at your wish, but you have to uh, fulfill the prerequisites. And also you will be put on like a secondary wait list to make sure like all the major students can get in, but you can, all, but you can always like, you can always just enter the classroom at your will and start to listen to their lectures. So this is about uh, academic strengths and academic flexibility. Uh, nearly all the students I know, they will be minoring in a major or double majoring, or maybe they will be uh, discovering their uh, interest in different kinds of classes. I know CS students going to uh, paid piano classes in CMU, and I also know students from our College of Fine Arts uh, doing like uh, software development that is pretty interesting yeah and also uh speaking of the research part uh we have a, a very broad, broad range of research topics going on in the school every year uh all you need to do is to reach out to your department advisor or reach out to any of the any of the professors that you have like taking his class and you just ask do you have any research going on that requires like a participation or require like research participants. And it is also very well paid. I have a, like a junior student, one of my friends participating one in one of these uh, research assistant roles and he's paid for $2,000 per week. Yeah. That, that, and, that's quite good. Yeah. And also about research part. Uh, so the most, shocked aspect when I first come into CMU is that uh, when I was having a lecture in the, in the math class and one of my, like the professor just said, the, the guy who like raised this maxim is actually like working on, on the, like the next floor. <laughs> His office is on the next floor. And also uh, we have like a recent like a Nobel 
econ winner, he has just passed away. But before that, you have the chance to listen to like these lectures. Yeah, and also uh, I'll move on to the career part. We all know that CMU is the target school for almost every computer science related jobs and also like investment banks. So I'll dig into a little bit in detail. So we have a career center for uh, all of the students and in each of our colleges, we have also have like a separate small career center. You can go to either one of them and they will be assisting you of any sort of uh, career related questions from uh, let's say like a resume like write up or you can have like a cover letter lecture on this and you can have like mock interviews. You can have uh, our career advisor helping you to construct your timeline about like a search job search. And you also get like, I would say like during uh, during like the right time during uh, spring and also during autumn, there will be major uh, like hiring events happening in CMU. Those hiring events usually consist of uh, 80 to 150 companies that is happening in our, sometimes like in a stadium, but usually like a place that helps a lot of people. All you need to do is to sign in and you don't need to be like is examined for anything and you can have like a pile of your resume and you can walk through like the entire career fair and just hand out your resume. And basically you'll uh, get a lot of like feedbacks from those employees. And also like the, after graduation, we have a, like a survey for all those CMU students about their like a uh, career status and their like salary. We'll have like a summary infographics uh, like in the later half of the uh, our talk because this is uh, more in detail. Yeah. And last part is about living. So Pittsburgh is a really, I would say, first of all, safe place to live. So uh, having like weed is illegal, carrying a gun is illegal. And most of the time you're living on campus and there are like 911 piles on like the side of the road. And once you press on the button, the campus police usually arrives in two minutes. And we have like mobile phone alerts. We have also, we have like email alerts and also those precaution uh, events happening. So it's pretty safe. I never seen anyone being like uh, personally harmed or like still for any, any of their goods. I never seen that. And also this is about the safety part. And also uh, for the weather part, uh, I'm from like the coastline city in China. So I feel this place is pretty pretty dry and it is, it is pretty cold. It usually like snows for uh, four weeks on and off. It snows from like late October to uh, early, I would say April. Yeah, we, we used to have like a snow on April Fool's Day and we also like joked, we joked about it, like being like, this is a joke from the God. <laughs> yeah, and so if you like cold and dry weather, this is definitely a good place. But if you enjoy like California sunshine for the entire year, this is probably, you're not gonna like it. Yeah, and let's talk about the cons. The first of all, there is a, definitely a stress culture in CMU. And I don't think you should be like panic about it and quit our talk because I'm gonna talk about how do you uh, relieve this at our like half, later half part of the talk. And it is really stressful if you cannot handle it. And people have like the tradition to admire those students who can take up more classes, but uh, commonly like those people who like overload their classes. Overload is a term that we use for uh, taking more classes uh, beyond your like uh, unit cap for every semester. Usually if you want to overload, it's because you want to catch up with other people's like uh, progress on graduation, or you are trying to double major 
and you just thought about it at your like junior year and you don't have a lot of time to do so, people will choose to overload. But the consequences of overload, if you cannot handle like the six or seven major classes as well, you're probably gonna uh, mess up at everything. Mm -hmm. So I would uh, recommend you to start to like plan out early and uh, also like try to take more classes during the summer uh, vacation rather than like like cramming everything up. Yeah, like squeeze the- everything in yeah. one semester. Yeah, so the, is the square just the stress uh, from maybe classes or there are any other factors that may contribute to the stress? Yeah, you're going to definitely have peer pressure because uh, I have a friend who started to take PhD machine learning courses in their junior year. And at that time, like his fellow peers, students are usually like taking uh, medium level uh, CS courses on, uh, I would say it only goes to, to like the intro level of machine learning and he, he's already like started on like hard level machine learning, also like deep learning stuff. So yeah, if you always compare yourself to the topest, you're going to be like freak out. But my, like my advice is to just be yourself and like you don't compare yourself to those who have the, like the worst grade, but all you gotta do is to uh, do good on your own courses mm-hmm. and don't be freaked out on other people's progress. Yeah, yeah. like to see the improvement uh, on yourself. And that would yeah. be better than just comparing yourself yeah, with the others. Because I do believe that, uh, especially for the CS major, it has to be competitive <laughs> at CMU. So of course you will, you can always find someone that um, it's better than you, uh, but not in a bad way. Because of course, we there must be someone better than you. But if you can just see your inner improvement, that would be uh, better to uh, relieve the stress. Yeah, yeah, sure, definitely. Thanks for the summary. And also, mm-hmm. I don't think the stress is entirely a bad thing because uh, mm-hmm. our we have two like major library in the campus, and one of them is called like Hunt Library. It is like a a five floor library that holds more than I was a couple of thousand students and it, it opens just like, does CMU have a College of Arts and Science? Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. I think we can, we'll talk about that uh, in the it next is, yeah. slide. It is yeah. just in the like, next slide. So just bear with me. Mm-hmm. So like the, you'll see like it opens like 24 seven and every time, like no matter what time it goes into that uh, library, you always see people studying. and. Uh, so when you're studying in that music and in that library, sorry, and you won't be like slacking anymore. I promise you, <laughs> like you don't even have the motivation to like take out your phone for for some like YouTube or TikTok times because you see people like coding like next to you, and you see people like writing their like homework on paper on or on iPad, and you, you definitely don't want to like use take your leisure time over here. Yeah, sure. And also the last part is about the tuition. It is definitely like the most expensive ones, but I would say like, it also pays you well because uh, you have like a very a very broad and also very good uh, career development after this. Yeah, so since we've been asked about the schools, I have a separate slide introducing you all the schools we have in CMU. So I know a lot of you, a lot of you are concerned about the School of Computer Science, but we also have a lot of other majors that we are proud of. So first of all is the College of Engineering. It is the second most popular school in CMU because uh, we have majors like ECE. Like this is also a very like well-paid major, I would say. And we also have there are like a couple of different branches, including like software development, hardware development in ECE, and I would say if you are interested about it, it is a very good place for you to go to because it is, it is also the top one or two among the United States. And we are being asked if we have a College of Arts. Yes, we do have a College of Arts. It's called College of Fine Arts. And people do like urban design and maybe like uh, 
parts like interior design, 2D design, 3D design, all of those related majors. And one thing to worst notice that if you are enrolled in this college, you are usually required for a five year elongated time of study because there is just a lot of content in this college. And the third college is Dietrich College of Humanity and Social Sciences. Uh, so we don't have like a whole college of art and science. We separate them into two colleges. The Dietrich College is mainly concerned of uh, social sciences. For example, uh, I was enrolled in one of the honor programs in Dietrich College. It is called the Quantitative Social Science Scholar. So we just use like quantitative tools to uh, analyze social events and to have some sort of insight. So that is about humanities. And the fourth one is called Mellon School of Science. Uh, this is the uh, school for major, uh, like in those uh, pure uh, theoretical majors, like pure math, pure physics, something like that. Not a lot of people are interested in that, but if you biomed, uh, we have like a bioengineering, but we don't have like a math school. So you're not going to see biomath in our like entire university. Yeah. And the fifth one I highlighted, this, this is the School of Computer Science. But uh, the School of Computer Science does not uh, only consist of CS major because it, there are other variety of branches, including like computational mass, computational uh, biology, and also more. So if you have time, you can go onto our website, discover, discover a little bit. And also we have a lot of minors in this college for you to choose if you are not entirely sure that you have your passion in computer science and requires more uh, exploration. And the sixth one is our Tepper School of Business. Uh, this is a very uh, well-founded school because our like the founder of the school David Tepper is uh, super rich and this is also like the most well designed and well built like uh, college building in our school and uh, it also have a lot of opportunities from uh, New York because it have like a separate school in New York it's called like Tepper New York or something and the, that one is for a master's students, so you'll get a lot of chance to get in touch with those opportunities in like New York investment banks. And some of the favorite, like uh, some of the favorite uh, majors in Tepper includes uh, computational finance or business administration. They're all top five major, I believe, in their separate rankings. And the last one is called Heinz College of Information System and Public Policy. Uh, sadly, this is a master's college. I don't think if you're being undergrad, you can attend it, but this is also a very good uh, college for your future perspective discoveries if you're uh, interested in continuing your study after, uh, mm -hmm. after undergrad, because there's also a top one major called uh, MISM. MISM, it means uh, for Master of Information System Management. It also have like a child branch called MISM uh, dash beta. It, it means uh, information system management in specifically uh, business intelligence and data analysis. This is the top one among all the data, among all the business analytics major in master study. And this is a real great place for you to go to. Yeah, so next up, we're going to talk a little bit in detail about the School of Computer Sciences. So I've mentioned that we not only have computer science, we also have artificial intelligence, computational biology, and HCI, human-computer interaction. So a lot of you have heard about like the recent uh, Elon Musk in acquisition about like the Twitter company, then their having like a hiring freeze extension sort of stuff. And a lot of people are concerned about like the career future or career perspective in computer science, but there are actually a lot of other, other major you can go to in the School of Computer Science. For example, like the HCI, I'm not sure if you guys have ever heard of it before. It is 
uh, concern about like user experience design and maybe like UI design and your interaction with any sort of uh, computer devices, including how you design your uh, user flow of using like a mobile to mobile phone app or how you can uh, pin some like detectors in your brain to see like your electromagnetic wave in your brain. It, it is really like fascinating major and it just like, it is like a new rising major in the most recent years. Yeah, I think they look great. I yeah. thought uh, CMU only has like a computer science major, but they have all these like branches under the computer science. And I think for the, like say the HCI, is that also common in the other schools or that's like uh, a CMU thing? Yeah, it is quite common in all the CS school because it it offers like a less competitive experience in like in studying because I all the people I know that go to HCI they have some sort of uh, uh, background in CS but they don't want their future career to be entirely like you know coding in front of the computer for the whole day but it. It consists of more like marketing research about how people feel about their apps. And it also consists of you yourself like experiencing uh, the entire logic or construction of your product from the perspective of a customer. So I think it's pretty interesting if you like coding and you also like talking to people and also uh, getting feedback from others. It is not like pure coding. Mm -hmm. Some people find it like pretty boring if you want to do pure coding. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Thank you so much. Yes. I think uh, this information about the schools and uh, majors are definitely really helpful. If you want to major in uh, CS major or if you want to uh, go to CMU, maybe. Yeah. So how many of you want to uh, maybe go to CMU when you apply to college or would you choose CS major? So if you are in those categories, you can maybe type one in the chat. Let's see, anyone wants to, uh, first let's do CMU. So anyone wants to apply to CMU when you apply to college after you heard about so many great stuff about CMU and yeah, anyone? Yeah, like while <laughs> you are typing, I would say more about CMU. So it is not really like a nerdy school you would think. So we have like a weird number one in drama major. So we have like a separate drama school. Mm -hmm in like the School of Arts. And I'm not sure if you guys have ever seen uh, like the musical called Hamilton and a lot of like the leading characters are actually graduated from our school. So we're not nice. really um, have like a lot of after class okay. events. Okay, all right, sounds good. And I think we have one question, like when you uh, apply to CMU, um, do you need to specify which college or major? Do you have to like say, uh, have your intended major or? Yeah, so I, I applied at 2019, so I would recommend you to check this uh, four years after because a lot of our policies have changed, including like not forcing you to get like your SAT or TOEFL score, but using Dolingo is fine. So a lot of policies have changed, but at the year I applied, you have to specify uh, which college and which major you're applying to. Yeah, and you have two choices. So if the first choice you don't get accepted, they will have you considered for the your second best choice. Okay, all right. Thanks so much. Yeah, so I think maybe for the next question, it's also related to your application. Yeah, so I know a lot of you, a lot of you guys are interested in our uh, guest uh, application profile. So I also um, asked uh, Ifan uh, before the event, for all the application profile. So um, yeah, you guys can see that he had a really good high school GPA and also got a really good uh, scores on the SAT. But I think the most uh, fascinating part is the number of AP exams you have taken. So you have taken 11 AP exams, right? Yeah. Yeah, and also we can see a lot of different um, activities as well. So I think maybe my first uh, question about your application profile is, how did you manage your AP exams? So if you have 11 APs, uh, how would you like better uh, plan out your AP and just don't get overloaded? And also how would you choose the AP exams and courses you want to take? 
Yeah, so first of all, uh, as, my, as of a background, I come from one of the international high schools in China. So that means we take uh, AP or IB or other college, like college prep courses rather than preparing for the China's like college entrance exam. So that leaves me plenty of time to like study for these courses. But usually uh, my, like the, my comfort zone is that I would take uh, four AP courses for uh, one semester and left one course, like, like the rest would be for my club time. And uh, yeah, I do take a lot of AP courses and I did not succeed in all of them. I actually taken 13, but I, at last I decided to drop two of them because I did poorly on them, to be honest. So you don't have to be panicked about seeing my profile. I actually failed at the backstage, so take it easy. And how did I manage all the 11 APs? Uh, can, we have to the, can we head to the next slide? Yeah, so I've actually had a section of all the AP exams that my school recognizes. So before you start your AP, before you start your college uh, like uh, application or you have been like early admitted to one of your colleges, I definitely recommend like no matter what college you are admitted to, you need to check their policy on their acceptance in AP or IB exam because uh, for CMU, they don't recognize a lot of like small exams that nobody really take. And this is like a list of two pages that they recognize it. And also if you are uh, currently a ninth grader, I would say uh, if you have like a dream school, it's better to start to prepare for some of the, like a basic uh, STEM classes from AP, like uh, math or physics or statistics. They're all fine because they're universally applicable to like all the schools. And if you are uh, like an 11th grader or you're, you're like in your 12th grade and you have been like admitted into one of these colleges, you can look specifically into like their graduation requirements on the on your major that you have been admitted into and to see if there's any extra ones you can take to accelerate your uh, progress like your process of graduation or to just to left, leave you more empty space in college to discover more like class slots for your, your own interest. So for people who are going into CMU, I have selected a couple of courses that I definitely recommend you to take. The first one is Calculus BC. And you will see like, uh, if you have got five on Calculus BC, you will be, actually like uh, you'll be allowed to use this for two courses and you can just skip these two courses in your college and you will be also granted with uh, 20 uh, units. So as a background, we need uh, 360 units to graduate. This is a, lot, a little bit different from other schools like 120 policy because you can just have like a multiplier of three and that will, have you the uh, sense of how how hard work this requires? Yeah. So if you got five in calculus BC, you got automatically passed for these two classes, and you got your uh, credits that you deserve. And also, computer science is a must. I, this is definitely a must, and this is a must five for this. So if you've been taking computer science principles, uh, you need a. It doesn't count even if you get a five. So you would need to take computer science A and get a five. So this will get you bypass 15112, which is the most well-known like CS courses in CMU, but uh, it is pretty stressing because it is, assumes you to, uh, sorry, just let me finish my sentence. I'll see the question. And it assumes you to have no background. So it will be really intensive in the coursework and you're gonna waste a lot of time if you have ever studied computer science A, but you didn't get a five. So I would recommend taking it repetitively until maybe two times a maximum until you get a five. And this is very helpful. And uh, the next one is statistics. This is uh, definitely recommended for you to take. 
this is because it can help you bypass 16200, and this is the basic ent like entrance level course with uh, statistics and data. Uh, you are not only required to take it if you are a statistic major, you are required to take it if you are an engineering major, if you are a, a business major, you're an econ major, or you are like a CS or a data science major because all of them builds on the foundation of statistics. So statistics AP is a must. And uh, so the next one is English, English, English language and composition. And I recommend this because we have like the general education requirements regardless of what college or what major you are enrolled. And the one of the most like tiring course is our like uh, freshman writing. But if you ever get a five in English language, you can take their like placement exam. And if it's actually like just a write, write up that you are be required to write about like a hundred, no, no, sorry, I'm sorry, a thousand words. And if you have demonstrated enough your writing ability, you can automatically get a uh, like a nine, nine unit and also get passed in that course. You don't need to take that course. You just need to take the placement exam. But the prerequisite for you to take that exam is that you get a five in English language and competition. And for the United States history and world history, I recommend you to take uh, one class alone because uh, they will be counted for uh, the same class in CMU is one of our requirements in reflecting courses, like reflect on past events or reflecting on uh, culture. So it'll be counting towards reflection. You can take either one of them. And one course I don't recommend you to take, take if you're going to uh, skim you is that you don't take micro and macroeconomics because if you take one of the courses alone, you don't have any credits. And if you've taken two along, if you've taken two together and get five on both the exams, which is pretty requiring, you only get nine credits. And as you can see, if you've taken calculus BC and get five, you get 20 credits. But if you get both five on the two economics exam, you're going to get nine. So that is not like the bend for the buck choice if you are, you if you have like a limited time towards your high school graduation. Yeah, and also the two economics course won't get you bypass any courses. You only, you're only like, you can only like change the sequence for you to take the their college level micro and macro class. So that's the one I don't recommend. And yeah, so my experience of managing 11 APs, I have some uh, extra uh, advice for you guys. So first of all, is definitely to uh, get more uh, familiar with the questions you're gonna be facing. You can use like a Baron study guide, you can use Kaplan. All of the uh, books are really helpful, but this beyond like only like answering questions, I would recommend you to have like a book of your wrong answer collection. And you don't need to do that every day because I know when you're doing like AP prep, you don't do a ton of questions like you do when you're preparing for GRE or like other language exams. You're only like, you only do like a couple of, so you can, like collect your wrong answers, like uh, I would say a week or half a week. And then you don't collect all of your wrong questions and answers because that will also be tiring. You're trying to categorize like the questions that you do wrong and categorize them to like a more general top, general uh, question outline. So you will know how to face all of these uh, any other like unexpected question, but they fall into these categories. So you'll be more prepared. And this is about uh, how do you like do your exercises. And also I definitely recommend you to take their uh, mock exam exams and also put a timer with you because I think the timing is very crucial. You don't want to get like messed up if you don't have like extra time to do your questions. And I think we have other aspects of the, uh, like my application profile. So I think maybe we can proceed to the next slide. Yeah. yeah. 
Yes, I think uh, also we have one question about the AP physics or chemistry. I think we can leave the answer in the QA session and just to uh, answer the other subjects as well. So I think for the previous uh, list of recommended courses, it's uh, mostly for the CS major, right? So the required courses you want to, you have to take as a CS uh, student. So we will also talk about the other subjects uh, at the end of the talk. Yeah, so I think uh, another big part of Ivan's application profile is his activity, especially for the robotics uh, competition. So I think maybe my next question is, uh, whether the robotics is the best activity for students interested in the CS major. And maybe you can just give us a brief one sentence uh, answer for now, and you can also elaborate more on that. Yeah, sure. My answer is it is definitely like one of these top choices if you wanted to go to the CS or any ECE majors or engineering majors. But this is, like, I don't think there is no single activity that can be considered the best because I think you all come from different backgrounds, you have different sort of interests. You don't need to force yourself to do uh, those activities. You can like shine more in the field that you are interested more in. So take myself as an example. The reason I chose to go to CS but not other engineering major is because uh, throughout the entire process of in participating in the robotics club, I just had a chance to discover a lot of uh, branches of this club, including we have like a promotion branch, we have the uh, public relationship with other teams in China. We also have uh, the hardware branch that focuses on building the, the robotic itself. We also have the programming branch that does like, uh, like image computer vision recognition because that's part of like our competition goal. And we also have like our board for like arrange, like managing the whole club. So I've actually part participated in all of them. So I, I know that like my interest is in more of a software programming rather than building up or like doing some wielding or like assembling jobs. So I, at last, when I was applying for a CMU, I decided to go for the CS major rather than the ECE. So I think the most uh, payoff I had from this event is that actually I get to like, uh, I have like in contact with a lot of possible majors in my high school and to, to my college. But at last, after experiencing all of them, then I decided CS is my, uh, part of interest in. And uh, so I have a section of our application requirement considerations on the uh, activity part. So can you go to the 15th? Yeah. So our school have emphasized that uh, you need to have uh, non-academic interest, including extracurricular accomplishment, part-time jobs, habit, hobbies, and community service. So Fully acceptable. And I would say this rather than the content of the activity, I think you should focus more on what, what, it, what this activity helps to reflect your personal, uh, personal goal or like personal attributes, including like leadership, motivation, or passion, or like concern for others. I think leadership is definitely the first one for you to consider if you have ever been like a chairman in any of your high school clubs or you have uh, like any like impressive leader or teamwork you've done with others, I think that is definitely worth to mention in your personal statement. And also <laughs> it doesn't really need to be academic because they also like accept non-academic interest. If you have ever like volunteered or you have been like teaching in any of those like distant places in, in the world. These are definitely like acceptable. And I know one of my friends have been accepted into stimulus CS major because, because he's a, a volunteer and social devotions. Yeah, so Simu only needs to know that you are a good person and you will show your academic strengths in your, in your grade book. And you, yeah, I can just barely like concern for these. 
and let me see. Can yeah. we go to the seventh slide? I think we're. Yeah, so yeah. I think maybe, uh, yeah, so just to sum up um, the application factors, I think uh, just in addition to your um, academics, your uh, reflections on all the activities you uh, did, and also just you have to show your reflection uh, in your maybe personal statement and also in like those essay prompts. So I think um, I think the other guests from the past uh, talks, they also mentioned the reflection. So I think the reflection is definitely a an important stuff because you don't want to impress uh, the school with your activities, but rather with your reflections. So if you have a really impressive um, reflection, then you will have a better chance of getting admitted, I would say. Yeah. Okay. And so we can see that there are a lot of things going on for your application. So just want to maybe know how do you plan your uh, college like preparation? So when you applied to college, like maybe doing high school or? Yeah, sure. Uh, besides like the previous point that I mentioned, when you are being admitted, you need to see like their uh, AP requirements and acceptance, uh, like a policy. You also need to see like your majors, like course path, because that's the one that will help you to uh, like succeed in your college because you can plan ahead. Like for example, some of the courses in CMU, they only offer in spring or they only offer in fall. And they are the prerequisite for the co-requisite for many other crucial classes after this semester. So if you've missed the chance for you to take this, take let's say one of the requirements in spring, you will also miss the chance to take its like ascendant or I'm sorry, like descendant courses in this, in like the next fall and you have to wait till next spring to wait till next spring to take that prerequisite and you can take that till like next fall for your desired courses and that will just that will just like uh, be a like very sad thing to do so i would say plan your courses ahead to see if there are any like special considerations in time you need to meet and uh yeah, and speaking of specifically doing CS at CMU, I have uh, showed you guys like on the next slide that there are actually a lot of ways to learn CS at CMU. And if you've been like admitted to one of those humanity or econ or like finance related major or even arts, you don't need to be sad about missing out all the opportunities. So if like the other humanity major is your field of interest, I, I would say def definitely this just go for it and use your spare time to take some of your some of those like valuable CS courses at CMU. So first one, you will get into CS majors through a direct application, and this is definitely like the most competitive one. And also, you can transfer from other like colleges, including like Dietrich or Tepper. And I have like attached like the requirements. You need to be at least 3.6 out of four QPA. That's like cumulative GPA. You can just like, you'll understand it as GPA. And you have to take uh, four of the, uh, six of these courses, like 15, 122, 15, 150, 51, 15, 210, 52, 13, 15, 251, uh, and uh, 21, 127. And in case you guys don't know what these uh, course numbers are about, I have uh, listed for you guys like principles of imperative computation, functional programming, parallel and sequential data structure and algorithm introduction to computer system, ideas in computer science and also concept math. And you have to finish all of them by the end of uh, your sophomore year because you will need to declare and fix your major at the end of the sophomore year. So is there a cap in, no, there is not a cap in inter-college transfer. All you need to do is to meet the requirement and also submit a paper to show your interest and get approval from your department advisor. So I would recommend you, to, if you want to go to CMU, uh, these courses are, are also the must for CMU like CS major students. So I would recommend you to take a screenshot and just search for these courses and uh, just to like see what they are about 
to see if they're your interest because CS major in you in the college is not about like doing like a turtle drawing or doing like, like other sorts of easy programming. It consists a, a lot of your like frustrating topics, I would say, because you will need to study very hard for it. And uh, we have like those byte codes in the bottom layer of, of your computer operation system. We'll also be doing a lot of like matrices or mass computation when if you are doing machine learning because this is what their neural structure constructed by so it's not about like just coding so if you can look up for these courses it will give you a better idea of what your courses are going to be facing mm -hmm. and you will have a better like you will be more determined or you will be like maybe other other major is your best choice yeah so you can also definitely transfer from other universities or you can just minor in cs uh so minoring is relatively easier rather than doing like transfer or number five you can take cs courses at your own discretion and we have some of the cs courses i definitely recommend to take one of them is uh 15112 the one you can like bypass it with your AP grade. So if you don't get well in AP, you can take that course. It's, it is about like Python programming and Python is fairly a easy and uh, easy to learn and have a lot of uh, applications. And you can use like web scraping for your future data analysis uh, missions, or you can just have like a small and easy apps out of your own interest. Yeah, so these are five ways to learn CSS. Mm -hmm. okay. and, uh, yeah, and yeah. I think uh, you also mentioned at the beginning that it's quite flexible um, at CMU to study CS, right? Like you can uh, just maybe uh, do a minor or you can also uh, transfer um, as well. So and you can also take the CS courses even if you don't major in CS. So I think uh, the school does have uh, quite a lot of flexibility here so that you can still take the courses. Um, if you are interested in CS. Okay, all right, good job. So, I, uh, and I think uh, for maybe uh, the final question I have, um, so I think we mentioned this earlier when we talk about the peer pressure. So I believe that a CS program must be quite competitive, but I think um, also for uh, a lot of our audience, we also want to know the typical career paths for the CMU uh, CS students. So where like do they go uh, upon graduation? I think that's also something maybe you can tell us about um, so that we can have a, some sense um, of the career paths. Yeah, sure. And I have an infographics on the next page prepared. So this is the summary for our students in uh, year 2020. They graduated from a CMU a CS undergrad major. Uh, I, I included like all the CS majors, including like bio and also AI and also HCI. You will see that 77% uh, are in, employed like immediately in three months after their graduation and 21% are continuing their education to PhD or master programs. And only 2% are seeking their job after two like after three months of graduation, uh, some of them because of their like visa states or some of them because pandemic, but I would say the, the chance of you not finding a job after graduation is extremely, extremely low. And uh, I would say that's like one out of a hundred. Yeah. And the uh, bottom left, we have our top organizations after graduation. You can see all of the top companies, Facebook, Amazon, Google, Microsoft, and also like Apple or Uber. I had a like I once heard a joke from one of my fellow CMU students. They said like Elon Musk should come to uh, CMU to be the school president because all of the same students are willing to work for like twenty four hours and for seven days. <laughs> but that's not not actually true. But this is uh, just a reflection on our stretch culture. But a lot of our colleagues, a lot of our like students, also alumni also go to Twitters as well. So. Uh, one of the benefits of our students going to all of these top companies is that uh, all you need to do is to go to LinkedIn or go to Handshake or one of these uh, socializing platforms. You find like a, one of your C, uh, CMU alumni and you just like DM him. Like, can you give me like a refer link for application into one of those um, 
uh, companies, and they will be very willing to do so because if they referred someone successfully, they they got like bonuses as well. So no cost for them. But so all you need to do is to dare to ask that. And if you get like a referral link while you are applying for these jobs, you will automatically pass like the first round of like machine filtering your like application and you can just directly get to like the human interview part. And the bottom, like the middle graph is for the employment and continuing education locations. A lot of them go to uh, California basically because of the Silicon Valley. We also have like a separate school of CMU at Silicon Valley that is for uh, the master's program. So if you are looking to continue your study as a master's student and also looking for tremendous job, job like uh, opportunities that uh, Silicon Valley branch is definitely a good place to go to. And a lot of people go to Seattle, people go to like New York for their uh, coding or finance jobs and Washington DC. And a lot of people stay in Pittsburgh as well. And some people go to Boston and this is like the distribution of our students. Mm -hmm. And also for the reported salaries, we have like the average salary of uh, 120K each year not including bonus, I think. It doesn't include like stock share or bonus because they'll be counted like separately. So you will get more, actually like more than 120K out of your job in the first year and you get like promotions afterwards. So, you know, I, I said like previously that CMU is like the most expensive CS schools basically, but you'll get like more better paid. So the payoff is very good in here. So I think CMU is a good choice if you're looking for any CS or related jobs. Let me see, you mentioned at the beginning of the talk, the list of CMU majors to top rank nationally. Would you mind mentioning the list again? Yeah, I think if you're looking for uh, like uh, CMU's top major, the first of all is ranked top, top one in CS undergrad major. And secondly, it is ranked top two in computational finance major. And uh, thirdly, in data analytics, I think it's in top three or top five. And for other major, we have like a drama school that's like co-ranked top one with like NYU and also uh, USC. And yeah, we also have others like ECE is also like ranked top three, like electrical computer engineering. Can you get a CS major without transferring into the college of CS? Uh, yeah, like CS, like the CS major in CS college is like a pure CS major. But if you're looking to do uh, CS jobs afterwards, you can like, Without you can you can get that with without getting to CS major. Let's say we have like a stats and machine learning major in Dietrich College. We have like the HCI that's uh, located like I would say part in Tepper and part in CS College. When you, we also have like data analysis major in the Dietrich College that also can get you as a data scientist. So. CS is like pure CS and you will be graduating and doing uh, software development. But if you want to do something like information system, like data set manage, like, like database management, database system design, or HCI, or like data analytics, data science, you can go to Dietrich School. That is like less demanding, but uh, still like a lot of work to do in CS courses. Yeah, and one last sentence for like, how do you uh, be less stressful after you're getting into a CS major at CMU? So you can actually, uh, during your uh, 12th grade summer vacation, you can go to YouTube and we have a lot of open courses like class recordings for the basic intro level CS courses, including 15112, 15122, and 15150. So viewing the, those lectures won't get you a like won't get you like automatically like pass and you don't need to take the courses in CMU, no, but 
you'll have like a very good idea of what the course is about and you can progress as you go through those recordings and you can teach yourself a lot of useful skills and you can just build on your weakness after you go to your college. So that is a really uh, important thing I found during, like before my high school and I make, I, I think I watched for like 40 or 60 hours of recordings during my summer vacation just on like on train on planes or whatever and i have always have like a computer next up to me like have a lap laptop to code according to their instructions and i found them really helpful like no matter what college you go to you need to like look for their open courses on available like on youtube yeah and i think we have our last today session mm -hmm. Yeah, I see. Okay, yeah, thanks so much. So I think that's quite helpful. So I think even though if you are not a 12th grader, if you just want to know whether you want to study in CS, you can also maybe go to YouTube and watch those like recordings of the classes to, just to get, get a sense on how the CS courses are like at college. Yeah, so I think you can also start like start ahead if you want to really uh, know CS uh, like in high school. Okay, yes, yeah, so I think that's pretty much all the questions we have uh, for today here and thank you again uh Ivan for the like the fantastic uh, sharing and I think we can also have our QA session but before that if you uh, want to uh, join our next event you can also scan my code on the left uh, so that I can send you the next event as well and also we have a quick survey here that you can maybe take uh, just a few minutes I would say less than three minutes if you want to do the survey. Yeah, so you can also tell us what you want to know about our next event so that we can better uh, plan our event and uh, just continue to have the great uh, events for the future webinars. Yeah, and also I think you can now ask any questions uh, you want to know uh, in the chat box because uh, Ivan is also the, uh, the president of CSSA at CMU, so he also knows quite a lot about CMU and also the CS major. So if you have anything you want to know, you can ask in the chat. Uh, what yeah, about sure. the EE major? Yeah, I think there's a previous question that popped up by Daniel, like follow up question. He asked, uh, did I participate in any mass or computer competition at high school? Yeah, so I participated the AMC mass competition. And I think I was placed like a top 2% among like globally. And I don't think that's a great help because that is that differ like that differs a lot from what you will learn in math classes at colleges. So if, since I'm doing like data science and machine learning, we mainly con concern about like uh, matrix matrices and high dim high dimensional like uh, regression or other sort of uh, mathematical analysis, but like the like the 2D geography questions we did at the AMC, I don't think it is like really helpful for your college study. So I don't think this like a must choice for you. And did I have any sort of computer competition? So actually the robotics competition, it, it, it just like uh, comprises of the computer science part. So when the college sees, it, sees that in my profile, he will know like what would that do because I elaborated in my personal statement about how I use like Python to do image recognition, to like uh, accomplish all the goals and also how to optimize the entire procedure when our robot, when our robot is running. So I didn't like participate in any separate competition because that one was uh, enough to demonstrate my skills and also my willingness to learn because I teach that myself yeah so i think that's very important for you to uh just like uh live well and prosper and also study well and see as you have the ability to teach yourself something and what about ee major uh yeah ee major is actually just like the ece major i mentioned we have like a different name for it but it's the same thing electrical engineering we have ece because we have like a computational uh, term in in between in between it <laughs> because it will not only teach you about those uh, hardware questions but but it all, will also teach you about how to program so that is a very like comprehensive major but it will not get in like get you very deep into computer science and that is our EE major called ECE yeah 
And does anyone have more questions? Um, so robotics is, is too common now in the U.S. Uh, yes, I think uh, Eva also did robotics uh, at high school, right? So I think that's also uh, kind of a big uh, robotics uh, competition. And uh, so you are uh, one of the team members for your uh, high school team, right? Yeah. Okay, I see. All right, great. Uh, and can you show the slides of AP courses that Ivan took in high school? Yeah, sure. I can uh, go back to that slide and you can also maybe uh, yeah, see the list of AP. Uh, did you take physics or chemistry? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I took it, but uh, it was uh, less helpful because it doesn't like count for our like uh, any major requirements so that's pretty much a waste for me but if you're into like other related majors or if that course counts towards your uh, desired college of like general education i would think you should take it why do we why do we need python image recognition for robotics because at my year when i was participating in the competition our goal is to let the robot robot like uh, run automatically and recognize like the the balls like being like shot on the field and pick it up and then shoot it back to go to like get score. So so into like to accomplish that goal, we, I used like like a package called OpenCV. It's called like Open Computer Vision or something, and that is like image recognition and if my robot sees it it will just go to the bar and pick it up and which grade did you take algebra two in yeah so actually my high school only have uh three grades so because i'm from china i only spent three years in high school so it is in my second school it's like second year of high school but i'm not really like entirely sure that that corresponds to like which grid in the United States. Okay, um, yeah, so if you, yeah, so I think that's pretty much it for today. And if you have any other future questions, you can also let me know and maybe I can forward those questions to Ifan as well. And also if you are uh, attending high school, if you know someone attending high school, uh, just next year, you can also let me know. And uh, because Ifan will also know uh, just quite a lot uh, from that as well. Yeah, so you can also let me know here. Yeah, I can share the slides in Discord if you are from Discord. Okay, yeah, so and also just one last thing here. So we will have another uh, webinar next week called the University Ready webinar. So we will also share about how you can plan your academic and also your act activities ahead. And also um, we will also share some insights on how you can do a better time management because being competitive uh, means you have need to have a better uh, time management and also you can improve on that uh, yeah and also just last thing about all the available resources from our community support so you can also scan the code on the right to join our webinar uh, next week uh, if you want to enter uh, discord um, let me private chat you uh, so you can maybe shoot me a message um, so that I can send you the invite yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I think that's pretty much it for today. And thank you again, uh, Ifan, for all the great uh, sharings. And also, uh, yeah. So I think that will be all for the talk. Okay. Thank you, guys. Sure. Thanks, Daniel. Thanks for like all the patience for you guys. Wish you guys good luck on the admission. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. Bye.